let's talk about death blade in depth for a little bit because people have been asking my engram is a little bit cheaper you don't have to worry about this because this is for head attacks and blade doesn't really have head attacks i think let's see yeah blades don't have head attacks so this is like a trolley this is like a trolley engramment that just decided to be having enough nodes for it the engramments that you should go for in death blade is Number one is supercharge, it's not grudge. Why supercharge? The remaining energy death blade utilizes four charge skills. I'm pretty sure you guys have used the charge skill already. It is slow as hell. If you use the charge skill with supercharge on, it'll be much faster. So let's see if I can do a comparison. So now I'm at supercharge zero. So that is the speed. And this is a speed with level three supercharge. There's a big difference. The engravements that you should really look for is your remaining energy, which is your class engravement, and supercharge, which is your engravement that effect impacts most of your skills. This is how you should think uh, in terms of how to be more efficient with your engravement that can actually help your class more. Later on, whenever you have additional engravements that you can add because you start to get orange gears or you start to get like, you know, legendary gears, you get to get better stones, etc., you would aim for something like grudge supercharge and remaining energy remaining energy needs to be level three because it is so efficient at level three it gives so much stat it gives movement speed attack speed and attack itself it just gives everything so you would need to make sure the remaining energy is at level three and your second priority will be at supercharge and then when you can add another level three engravement it will be grudge so your final end build for the NA server, realistically, should be grudge, supercharge, and remaining energy. You'll be good enough. You can beat you can beat most of the dungeons. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can. You can probably get MVP too. Afterwards, if you're gonna add another one, it will be something like Master of Ambush or Curse Stall. What's the difference between Master of Ambush and Curse Stall? Master of Ambush relies on back attack. So if you need to back attack in order to do extra 25% more damage. Curse Stall, on the other hand, gives extra 16% damage but your heal, you do reduce heal, which is 25% uh, le uh, less heals. This is including your potions and etc. So Curse Dawn and Grudge is one of those penalty engravements that people use, that people have to use to increase their damage. And if there's a fifth engravement that's coming in, most of the people use uh, Curse Dawn because it increases another 16% damage. So that'll be the three fives. Uh, that'll be the last, that'll be the last engravement that people would go. Because five threes is like the final builds that most people go for engravements, which is accessories and etc. So these, that's what the people would be aiming for. You would need to focus on your specialization as much as you can, as high as you can. Mine is pretty low because this is more of a budget character I have. Your specialization should be higher because it increases your orb gain much faster and you do more damage on your surge. And then you put your uh, substat on crit, which is your necklace only. So this case, necklace, necklace is the only stat that gives crit and specialization and, and the rest of the accessories should give only spec. And for engravements, again, remaining energy, supercharge, and if you want to add more, grudge, and master of ambush, and curse stall. And now, let's go to the skills real quick. So your spin cutter uh, moves three times, right? Because it has a triple spin on it, right? So triple spin is good. However, the real reason of you use spin cut is not the triple skin. It's, it's more of this first tripod which it gives 3% of, or up to 9% extra damage when landed. So this debuff is the actual reason why you use spin cut instead of the actual movement. So when you run out of skill points, you can actually lower the spin cut if you want to save skill points. Dark Axel, you use it to dodge stuff and you use it because it has super armor also. And it also grants movement speed. So if you don't have any skill points, it's okay to take this off as well. If I remove high Axel, it'll be much different skill. It kind of moves this way, right? And then you do your second attack there, right? So it's pretty useless. So if you're not getting it to level 10 to dodge away stuff, it would have made sense. You would use Dark Axel to go behind it and do your attack. You wouldn't be able to do it if you have the third tripod. So if you don't have any skill points, you would just remo remove this completely and level it on something else. The Soul Observer is your number one skill that you should level up because this gains the most orbs. You want attack speed to be your primary goal and then damage. So you have this damage here and then you have last tripod that turns it into a two hit combo. Now your earth slash is also very good. However, if you don't have any skill points, you would take it off and then put it up to seven because this would just add additional explosions to your earth slash. If you look at here, 
But if you're using Earth Slash as a counter, which most people are, you will put it on seven, or you can even put it on four. If you put it on four, what's going to happen is you will dash forward and slash. That's it. And the dash part and your slash is a counter too. So you counter twice. So you can use it as that way as well if you run out of skill points. Moonlight Sonic is very good. You should max it up as well. It does huge AoE and then it does a lot of damage. All the tripods are based on damage. Damage, damage, damage. So for Maelstorm, it is fixed at level 7. Why? Because Maelstorm is a skill that increases your orb gain and increases your buff. This is why Deathblades are really good into the party because she gives you a buff that increases your movement speed and attack speed. So this is like your primary tripod that you should get for your team and yourself. These two tripods are completely useless. You don't use it at all. And for Blitz Rush, you have the crit rate, and then you have your damage-related tripod, and then you also have a damage-related tripod, but it also turns into projectile. So if you use it here, it's supp you're supposed to dash forward and slash. If I show it here, it's supposed to dash forward, but this is not how you use it. You use it as a projectile. So these are the tripods here. And Voice Strike also. Voice Strike has an additional orb gain. So you would get that tripod here. And then you put damage related tripod and then you put the damage related tripod for the awakenings you have the blade assault and flash blink you only use flash blink you don't use blade assault at all because flash blink you it makes you go behind them and then you gain a lot of orbs and make sure you turn on your maelstorm too maelstorm and ultimate you will fill up way much more as you notice so your maelstorm is your key skill you should not just over you should not just spam it you need to plan your maelstorm really well before you use your skills uh to review again if you don't have enough skill points, prioritization would be level 7 Maelstorm is a must. And you have your Soul Observer, and you have your Voice Strike at max. And then you would aim for Moonlight Sonic and then Blitz Rush. And then your extra skill points would be distributed among utility skills, because these are technically utility skills. So how gems work usually is you have, you have the damage gems, and you have your cooldown gems. So this, is, this works the same way of most characters. For example, you have Soul Observer, Blitz Rush, Moonlight Sonic, and Void Strike. Oh, these are main DPS skills. What should I do? I should have Damage Gems on top of them. So I have Damage Gem and Soul Observer, Damage Gem and Moonlight Sonic, Damage Gem and Void Strike, and Damage Gem and Blitz Rush. And what's the other Damage Gem? It's your Surge skill. So I have five Damage Gems. Usually, skills with a Damage Gem is also accompanied by a Cooldown Gem because you want faster cooldowns on your main important skill. So you have Void Strike Damage, Void Strike Cooldown, Blitz Rush Damage, Blitz Rush Cooldown, but your search skill doesn't need to have cooldown because search skill doesn't have a cooldown. But your counter, cooldown is better than damage because you, you, you want counter to be ready as soon as possible. This is the same case for a Maelstorm. So in this case, when you guys are using the tier 2 gems, just wear anything. You don't have to worry about it. 